Hey there, colleague. How in the world are you going? I'm Dave Stewart, classroom teacher, author of some books about teaching, and I want to talk to you about the Conversation Challenge strategy. I write about this strategy in the speaking and listening chapter of my book, These Six Things. And in that chapter, I basically argue that teachers only need three different strategies for speaking in the classroom. One for pairs, one for small groups, and one for whole class. The pair method that I use is the oldie but goodie, think pair share. The whole class that I use is pop-up debate. And the small group structure I use is called conversation challenge. So the idea is that you just set a time limit where your groups need to keep the conversation going and on topic for the whole length of that time limit. And the only other rule is that everyone needs to speak at least once. And so what this strategy does is that it keeps conversations focused. You have less off-task student behavior because you've front-loaded the fact that this needs to be on topic. And you've also front-loaded the fact that this needs to last. And so before a conversation challenge begins, it's important to remind students what they might do if their group goes around, everyone talks, and there's still a minute left on the timer. How do you keep the conversation going in that type of situation? So students are practicing some great social intelligence skills that are going to be useful in all areas of life in the future. As they're talking, you walk around the class, you listen in, you identify common student misconceptions, common student struggles, and then afterwards you just debrief how the challenge went. So with my ninth grade students, I often set the timer at three to four minutes. And for this particular school year that I'm filming this in, I haven't really done conversation challenge with the students before. So in the student footage that we're about to see, this is in May of the school year and with not a lot of conversation challenge experience before this. So they're, they're coming at it pretty raw in terms of the small group structure. But they do have tons of pop-up debate experience. If you search for my YouTube playlist for pop-up debates, you can see the whole progression of 20 debates that we did in the 23-24 school year. So it's not like they're new to the whole public speaking thing. So now let's talk about how to use conversation challenge to build student efficacy. In my book on student motivation, one of the five key beliefs for student motivation is efficacy. I believe that I can succeed at the work that I'm being given to do in this class. And one of the strategies that I recommend for positively cultivating efficacy is unpacking outcomes, good or bad. So what you need to do at the end of a school year to do something like what I'm about to show you is to have a set of work that students have done. It could be essays, it could be projects, it could be certain ongoing homework assignments or quizzes. We want them to be able to get that stuff out or look, open it up on the computer, and you're going to give them some time to just look for patterns in their work. So you can see here is a slide that I use to introduce to my students what they're going to be doing in this kind of planning phase and what we're after in terms of our skill acquisition and just unpacking our outcomes, unpacking how they've done on a series of essays that we've recently completed over a number of weeks. Then I introduce the structure to them. What is conversation challenge? What are you gonna to have to do? And I include a list of explicit prompts that their group can use if they get to that point where there's a lull in the conversation. And I don't really do much more instruction than that. I don't wanna to be too prescriptive, do too much front loading because at the end of the day, I'm asking you to talk in a group this is something that they've done before, and I want them to just experience the types of things that make this kind of activity hard on their own. I don't want to bore them and do so much front-loading that it, it wastes a bunch of class time. So now I'm just going to show you how it went. You're going to see a full four-minute conversation challenge. You'll see me unpack what happened in that conversation afterwards, and then you'll see me introduce a, a second one real quick because we were at the end of the hour. I had another four minutes. And the great thing about conversation challenge is that you can just pull it out and use it and fill those last minutes of class with some quality, productive conversation. So without further ado, I'm just gonna play these clips, not perfect clips, not perfect student work, but work that I deeply admire because it is work. They are attempting to do a difficult thing, talk to their peers about a topic that they've not chosen, talk to folks that they're not necessarily buddies with outside of class, and so I'm really proud overall of the work that you're about to see. Enjoy, and please let me know if you try something like this in your own classroom. I always love hearing from my colleagues doing stuff, the crazy stuff that I write about. So I really want to take my business. I suck it out and everyone's going out and suck. I just like to sit around it and I'm just like, 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 I
and off topic on the SAQ is another weakness I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the BBQ, I kind of show her sourcing because they miss a point there. And then the SAQ, I'm either underexplained or off topic. I agree with Henry because like, my sourcing was not good, and then I think I kind of just like, figured it out towards the end. I don't think I got a single sourcing point for my first three. DBQs, and then for probably the SAQs, I would say just like, probably like the middle questions, I don't know what the, what the difference is between those, but those just, I struggle with that. Yeah. Uh, personally, for the LAQ, the one I get wrong a lot is the analysis and reasoning. I think it's just because, like, I put it in there top, but I just don't go into depth on why it works. Uh, for the DBQs, it's, uh, I think purely it's, it's evidence beyond dots. A lot of times they use like really basic evidence, but it's like all they can remember during it. And uh, SAQs, I have a pretty steady point. I never use the evidence. Yeah, for DBQs, I'm mainly missing the uh, fourth thing, and then I also have to assess on the I think it's like, you, once you get, like, the hang of it, because, like, what I do is, like, oh my gosh, why can't I see this again? <laughs> um, I just say the same thing for, like, everyone, like, the every source of, like, this person may have exaggerated this because of this reason to make him seem better than the other people. I literally use the same thing every time. But he counts it, so. Yeah, it's counted. It's and, it's a and that's like English, like your English knowledge doesn't count. It's your knowledge of like history is what you need in a DBQ. <laughs> Keep the conversation going. You got a minute 42 left. Guys, during my sourcing, talk about strategy. Uh, I noticed that when I tried to source on my most recent one, I instead I just got complexity because I was I don't really know what I was doing there, but I did something cool. Extra hard at it. Yeah, and but the rest are like lower. And this this one I did get my sort evidence, and this one too, but the rest I haven't because I was out of period. Okay, I found it. In my LAQs, I realized I should probably start um, going a little more into analysis and reasoning to strive for those two points. Yeah, yeah that's what I got last time. Well, adding on to Aaliyah's idea of sourcing, uh, a plan for the exam is probably to write down the happy at the beginning and then write the odd, the historical situation, the audience, the POV, the purpose, and then the why, and then try to go for that happy always. I'm also going to write that and um, write I need evidence because yeah. I missed that. Just like write little notes on the paper, on a scrap piece of paper yeah. so you can get it. Okay, so I'm going to show you my growth for the LEQ. I went from a 1 to a 4. Nice! Um, but on the 1, I was like vague and I copied the prompt statement. Um, so on this one I did not do that and I went up a lot. Um, something for the exam, it's more, instead of like a writing thing, it's more like a, kind of like a mental state. I feel like I should, you know, be like a little more time responsible and like stop, stop panicking and just kind of yeah, I'm really worried about this. I'm not gonna lie. I'm All right, so very good. Okay, yes. 100% success there. How many groups had at least one awkward pause? Didn't mean it lasted a long time, but okay, very normal, very normal. And then, how many groups had someone just kind of step up and end the pause by just asking another question? That's great, guys. That's that's really what um, it's giving you guys comfort with that. The conversation challenge is meant to be all about. So let's do it. And it also obviously gets everyone thinking. Everyone in the whole room gets to talk in much shorter time. So we accomplish some pop and debate stuff in less time. I want you to think about your PD legs for this last one. We're gonna do one more. It's not gonna be as long. So this one is gonna be all about what's your study strand. What's your study strategy this week? What specific things can you realistically expect yourself to do before the final exams? All right, so we're going to be realistic. We're not just saying I'm going to watch all the videos of so-and-so because, you know, that's not realistic for all of you. You've got games. you got obligations. Um, maybe, it's, maybe it's not video watching at all. Maybe it's something else. 
So this is you putting out there what you're planning to do specifically, what you want to accomplish on the evenings between now and Friday. Okay, I'm going to set a timer for this one for three minutes. Go ahead and get after it. Well, I've been doing that more, like writing them down. And I haven't finished it all, but I'm planning on finishing it by the end of the week. And also, I've been doing a lot more. Yeah, I think I'm going to do kind of like what Aaliyah said is I'm kind of sticking in like a comfort zone of like a certain unit. So I feel like it's like I should go back to the units I'm noticing that I'm having more difficulties with and like not as comfortable with. And just kind of do like, like Elbert's on them, maybe watch the videos. Yeah, Elbert Unit 1, I have all those like 100% in like that one's obviously because it's Unit 1, but I need to go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I know, I'm like sticking with like Unit 2 and unit A, I need like start reaching out to like unit five. And stuff. Um, so I'm gonna do some Elbert because I feel like it helps me learn the language of college more. And um, I'm also gonna do some Quizlet because Quizlet has like all of the. I found his must know dates Quizlet and I haven't been doing it, but I had planned to, so it's bookmarked. It's, it's an idea that I have. I'm gonna try. And, and also, just like some like self esteem to like be able to be like, you know what? I'm gonna get out of bed. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm study. Yeah. I'm gonna like, yeah. I'm gonna, like read over my notebook. Like, look at the music. I didn't know who Wolf Tunes Henry did. I forgot about that. And he was like, oh, maybe you could do this for a context or whatever. And I was like, I didn't, that didn't even come to my mind. So maybe once, maybe I'll like look over my Albert like percentages and be like, oh, this is the unit I need to like active recall on. I'll probably go over like the rapid fire questions of like the earlier ones, like not like eight, but like because those ones um I don't really do notes on those units very much. <laughs> it was basketball season, so I did. I just memorized the rapid fires so I could get good grades on the quizzes. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, yeah, gonna be a big part. Of it. Yeah, making sure you're not behind and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, good work. Did we not learn? Did we not learn? No, but we didn't learn anything. So, our goal there, <laughs> Taylor, I heard that, and there's a lot of truth to that. No. Um, there, I, I heard. I don't know, maybe like 15 different unique strategies, stuff that I never would have thought of. So I hope from that second segment that maybe you take away a little more inspiration this week to try something that, that's really selected by you, right? I'm not, I'm not dictating anything. I mean, I put the Freeman, that's an option, but like it's not required. It's all about what you want to do to make you bring your strongest game to the final exam this weekend and the final exam next week. Super proud of you guys, who you are as speakers and people. Beautiful. It's getting emotional. It's beautiful. I'm going to go cry now. <laughs>